Pulsed Nuclear Thermal Propulsion. I had promised you an update on the best current technology for space exploration. This course will cover a very exciting technology proposed by brilliant scientists at the Polytechnic University of Catalonia in Spain. They have recommended using a pulsed nuclear reactor to dramatically increase the performance of a nuclear rocket engine for space exploration. Let's evaluate this idea closely. As you will remember from our course on advanced ion propulsion, nuclear power is the only current answer to the high power needs of advanced propulsion systems. Since fusion is not ready at this time, and may not be for a long time, that means fission power. We have looked at radioisotope thermal generators, or RTGs. These are great for backup power, with no moving parts on many of them, but are insufficient for propulsion need for anything except long duration robotic missions. We also examined nuclear reactors. Now an RTG is not adjustable. It puts out a certain amount of power, slowly decreasing, for a long time. It's basically a nuclear battery. A reactor is adjustable. It's more of a nuclear engine. You can increase and decrease the power output usually with control rods being inserted but sometimes with cylinders that have a neutron absorber like carbon on one side and a neutron deflector like beryllium on the other. These cylinders can be rotated to face either side toward or away from the reaction mass. The reaction mass is usually uranium-235 but could also be plutonium. When the beryllium is facing the uranium the neutrons emitted by the uranium is bounced back into the uranium and increases the number of chain reactions. The carbon side absorbs the neutrons and slows reactions. This, with a cooling system, is how the topaz reactors work. The neutrons usually only contribute about 5% to the heating of the propellant that is ran through the hot core in the case of the Nerva engine, or Kiwi B, that we discussed in another course. The propellant flow rate is limited by the pump speed and something called residence time. How long does the propellant have to be in the core to absorb enough heat to give a good engine efficiency? As we discussed, the specific impulse of the best chemical rocket engine is about 455 seconds in vacuum. For the NERVA program, while testing the Kiwi B reactor, we get a specific impulse of about 900 seconds twice the efficiency of a chemical rocket with good mass fuel flow producing significant thrust. Not enough thrust to have a high enough thrust to weight ratio to get off a planet. Remember that ion engines cannot process enough propellant fast enough to produce high thrust. In fact 5 to 40 newtons is the best they can do with a specific impulse around 5,000 and a power drain of at least 200 kilowatts to produce this anemic thrust. What makes the pulsed nuclear thermal or pulsed neutron thermal rocket engine so important? This type of engine revs the reactor up to a sudden burst of power, releasing a flood of neutrons. These neutrons react with the nuclei and the propellant and almost instantly bring it to very high temperatures. In fact, this engine can make the propellant hotter than the core itself. How is this possible? Think of the neutrons as working like microwaves in a microwave oven. The oven itself does not get that hot, but the water in the food you are cooking absorbs the microwave radiation and heats up more than the oven. This works for the neutrons also. The kinetic energy of the high-speed neutron striking the nuclei of the propellant transfers this kinetic energy from the neutrons to the propellant causing a type of flash heating. This takes a few thousandths of a second rather than several seconds. The pulses can also come very frequently. Up to 10,000 pulses per second is possible. If our pump is strong enough and our residence time is only say one one hundredth of a second, we can get a huge mass propellant flow with extreme heat, producing a specific impulse of up to 5,000 with massive thrust. This could be the best of both worlds. High efficiency with high thrust. Much better than any chemical or ion engine could ever hope to achieve. What could we do with this kind of power, efficiency, and thrust? Let's build that awesome spaceship we always wanted. If we take the mass of a SpaceX Starship as about 100 tons with 80 tons of propellant and apply it to our theoretical pulse nuclear thermal engine, we get a delta V of 80 kilometers per second. That will let us get up to Earth escape velocity burning only 20.5% of our fuel. 
assuming 11.5 km per second delta V to launch from the Earth and reach escape velocity. This leaves us with almost 80% of our fuel and a delta V reserve of 68.5 km per second. Start thinking about how you get around the solar system and delta V. We could go to Mars, land on Mars, launch from Mars, come back from Mars, and land back on the Earth using a total of about 34 kilometers per second. Now this is a spaceship. Going to the moon only takes a delta V of about 15.07 kilometers per second. We could refuel there and head out to deep space. To the moon and back would be about 30.14 kilometers per second. It doesn't take that much more energy to get to Mars than it does the moon, it just takes a lot more time. There is nothing short of a fusion drive that can match the potential of this technology. Similar technology has been used in nuclear reactors for training and research, called trigger reactors, TRIGA. These operate all over the world and have been pulsed to 22 terawatts without damage. Now let's hope humanity can realize at least half the theoretical power and efficiency of this engine in a small enough mass to fly. We could finally have not only single stage to orbit, but single stage to Mars or the Moon and back without refueling. That would mean on to Jupiter, the asteroid belt, and Saturn by refueling on our Moon or the moons of Mars. Something to dream about. Deep gratitude to the Polytechnic University of Catalonia, Spain, and Professor Francisco J. Arias for this excellent idea. Thank you for listening, and stay safe.